This week's guest on the Garage Shop Insider, Ken McNaughton. He's the curator for Vance Kirshner's Goobers Racing Museum in Wilmington, Delaware. He also helped head up construction of Goobers Diner in Wilmington, Delaware. We would also like to welcome Vance Kirshner, owner of Labware, Goobers Racing, and Goobers Diner from Wilmington, Delaware. Vance became a partner of ours two years ago. We formed a very special bond based on a passion for speed, both at Bonneville and Arkansas. We're glad to have him with us as an engineer and a friend. Now we're talking with Kenny McNaughton from Goober's Garage in Wilmington, Delaware. And Kenny, you are the curator, taker care, whatever you want to call it, for museum and car collection. The museum has 40 cars, collection has 80 cars. What all do you do with that? Try to keep them maintained and clean and make sure they're all running. You never know what one Vance is going to want to come right. get and drive. Um, it's 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 really fun to take care of the cars and uh, we we've actually opened a, a diner recently and the the new thing we're doing now is when you know there's a line or there's people at the diner yeah. waiting to get in and get their table um, I've been opening up the garage and allowing people to come through and see the cars and it's it's really been huge people are you know really really like seeing the cars and uh, they kind of forget they just waited 30 sure. minutes for a table. <laughs> do you have milkshakes? Do you make milkshakes at the diner? No, I know. If they want anything. Yeah, at the, at the diner yeah. we do, not at the garage. Okay, I was going to say. No, no, right. no milkshakes. Now, I'll in. come now. If you make milkshakes, I'll be yeah, there. Yeah, if you want something to drink at the uh, <laughs> at the garage, you're getting a beer. That's fine. Uh, that's a nice backup plan. <laughs> um, so of the 40 cars total sit where the public can view them, correct? Yes. And so, But there's 80 altogether. Yeah, where, where do you keep the other... Well, we, we recently had to get a, a backup warehouse because uh -huh. uh, I think Vance and I have an addiction where we like to buy these cars. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we outgrew the museum pretty quick. Okay. Um, so we, we've got another warehouse not far away, and uh, it, it, it's kind of full now, too. So we just stash the cars wherever we can find a spot. Um, sometimes it's a car trailer. Right. Sometimes it's a, a, a strange garage. Whatever we got to do to keep, take care of them. So if, if you have 80 but only 40 are on the floor, how do you decide who stays, who goes, who gets, you well, know, there, change it up a little there bit? Are some, there are some that Vance likes to drive. We, we, we call them his drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we make Which sure. Which ones are those? Well, yeah. well he, he's got a 72, 71 El Camino he nice. likes to drive, a 64 Thunderbird he likes to drive. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't put those in the museum. Uh, we make sure that they're, they're available for him to drive whenever he wants. A lot of the cars that are not in the museum are worthy of being there. So we'll kind of rotate and we'll switch them up and, 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 and we'll change them once in a while so when people do come in, they're not seeing the same thing every right. time. You know, it, it's always something to look forward to coming back. Uh, question, are any of the cars for sale? And are on the floor, possibly? The ones that are there now, I can't imagine selling them. Okay. Um, I would think that if the price was right, sure, sure they, yeah. they could be sold. Because um, remember, but, you bought those cars from somebody, so somebody else might want those cars sure, too. Sure, right? absolutely. And, yeah. and the cars are all very unique. They all have a story. Yep. Um, we have applied for a dealer's license, and we will eventually start selling some classics. Hmm. Um, the ones that are in the museum now are, are all kind of special, and I they can't imagine ever selling them. But we, we will have cars for sale eventually, yes. What's the oldest one in the collection? It is an 1899 Knox Porcupine. What? Um, what is that? It, it <laughs> is one of the first motorized vehicles. Yeah. What fascinates me is it was a prototype in 1899. They only made three of them. Wow. Um, there's only two of them left, and, and Vance's is all pretty much all original. Mm -hmm. The wheels have been redone. Um, but the cool thing about it, it, it I, I believe his name was Robert Knox. I'm not 100% sure. But he was 17 years old when he created that car. Him and a friend made mm -hmm. that car in his garage. Um, and it, to me, it's just fascinating that a 17-year-old could come up with, sure. this, with this, you know, invention. And it still runs? It still runs, absolutely. Wow. We had it at a uh, show in September. It's a three-wheel car, mm -hmm. and we trailered it close, and then we drove it into the show, wow. and we drove it out. Um, and all of the cars function, they all run. So is it three, does it have the 
handle? What's 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 how's it? How do you steer it? With a wheel? It, or the it's like it's got like a tiller. Tiller, right? Yeah, right. it's a, yeah. a tiller, and it's three wheel, and and it, it's it's wow. It's just pretty cool. It's it's a porcupine, and the reason it's called a porcupine <laughs> is because it's an air cooled engine, mm -hmm. and it has eight hundred and forty pieces of all thread as cooling fins. Mm -hmm. So, what's cool about that is. They didn't have machines and, and drill presses right. and whatnot yeah. to drill these. I mean, that was all done by hand. They drilled it, then they had to tap it, and then screw all the little quarter-inch pieces of all thread in. <laughs> it, it, and that's why it's called a porcupine. Right. It, the, <laughs> it has the, all the different. Yeah. yeah, the motor looks like a porcupine. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Uh, what are some of your favorites of the collection? I have different favorites for various reasons. Mm -hmm. The the old vintage ones, we, we recently got one from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum, mm -hmm. and it's a 1928 Buick okay. with a rumble seat. It's, nice. it's just a beautiful car. It, it's a good runner. It, it drives great. Um, he has a 29 Packard, which was owned by the mayor of New York City. Yep. True piece of art. Wow. I mean, this car is unbelievable. It, it, it even has a leather wrap on the leaf springs. Hmm. Uh, Fancy. He, he, there's a 1959 Cadillac, all original, original paint, original interior. What color motor. is it? Uh, it's a dark blue. Okay, good. Um, it has 18,000 miles on it. I mean, it, it's just, it's really a cool car. I mean, it, it's just, and the size of it's uh, amazing. Good on gas, I'm sure. Uh, probably not so much. <laughs> Probably the, not the so The speedometer goes one way and the gas gauge goes yeah, the other it, it, at the yeah, same time. Exactly. So, um, and he's got some new stuff, too. He's what got, else, what's, what's been added, recent additions? Um, well, there. It, I don't know if it's the most recent addition, but um, he's got a 2020 Yanko Camaro, which they only made mm. 50 of these yep. cars. 25 of them were 1,000 horsepower, and that's actually one we took to the Arkansas Mile. That car's been 203 miles an hour. Um, it, it's really a fun car. Um, so he has that. We took a 2018 Dodge Demon mm -hmm. to Arkansas. Fans got that to 205. <laughs> um, we we want to represent Ford, so we sure. just recently bought a, a Shelby GT500, and that's going to be the next one wow. we take to Arkansas. Wow. So it's a lot of fun. What Of all the ones that in the collection of the museum, when people come in, what's the which one gets? Would you think some of the biggest reactions? The biggest reaction is absolutely a 1952 Glass Par. Um, Glass Par was a boat manufacturer, and oh. I believe they're still in business. Okay. I think they make speedboats in California. Um, with having a fiberglass experience, the guy wanted to make some cars, and they mm -hmm. never really took off into production. They maybe made, I think it was less than 3,500. Um, the model we have is less than a hundred of this one model. Uh, but what's unique about it, it has a Cadillac motor in it and all of the other ones all had Ford motors, mm -hmm. all Ford drivetrains. Um, but what's, what the people notice about it is the paint job on it. It's got like a candy apple reddish color and it's just, it's beautiful. Sticks it's just out. a cool car. Uh, when I first saw it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Roger Rabbit's car. It's okay, the, yeah, yeah, that's something yeah. related to that. You know, and, and it's, it's just an amazing car, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so of the classics, what would be one of the, I don't know, what, what year is a classic? What year is a cutoff? Is it, it used to be 20 years, I think it was? I would say 20 years for a classic, 25 for okay. an antique. So right. um, with the exception of the newer ones we've been using for land speed uh, racing, uh, they're, they're all antiques. So. so thought, when you take some of these beautiful, ex probably very expensive cars out to the land speed, there's a chance something could happen out there, but you're willing to just go out there and risk it for a... Uh, Absolutely, Reward, right? it's it's not a real big strong concern advances. Okay, good. Uh, you know, it's it's it's. I think I think it's more about having fun sure. and doing what we like to do. What is it? I mean, where did your passion from cars come from? I've always liked cars, even yes. when I was a young kid. What I, was your first favorite? My first favorite was a Corvette. I always dreamed of having right. a Corvette um, from the time I, w I was very small, and I I knew one day in my heart I was going to have a Corvette. No. Um, I was very fortunate. Um, I came across a deal I couldn't resist when I was 17, and I got my first Corvette. Which is? Uh, 1968 uh, 427 convertible. Nice. Um, convertible. I still have it. 
Uh, I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. It, it, it. That's one that'll never get sold. What color is it? It's a Nassau blue. Okay, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Convertible. Yeah, convertible, very four nice. speed, yeah. How many other Corvettes are in the collection off the top of your head? Well, I have one. I have a 04 commemorative edition, mm -hmm. and then Vance has a 56 Corvette, which mm -hmm. is, it's um, not quite sure what the color is called, okay. um, but it, it it's like a light blue, like a, uh, mm -hmm. like a powder blue or something. Um, it's just a beautiful car um, with the red interior. I'm not much wow. on red interior, but the color combination, you know, with the with the white insert, it, it's it's really a nice car. So, with all that you have and all that's there, is there one car? If you could personally go out and find one car, what would be a, a, a dream car for you to have in that collection? Gosh, that'd be a tough choice. Ah. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I could do that. Okay. Um, I, I guess. If, if I really had to do that, it would probably be the Corvette. Yeah. If I thought about it um, and I did it with my brain instead of my heart, um, <laughs> it, 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 it would be one of the more valuable ones. Uh -huh. Right. Um, but yeah, if, if, if I could have any of the cars there, the, the Corvette would, I, I, I like Corvettes. It okay. would be the Corvette. Okay, so not, something not in your collection. What's one outside of you, any car in the world that you get your hands on? Well, the, the theme we like to go with in the museum is All-American. Perfect. Um, I I've, have several on my list that I always request from Vance. Um, I think any museum uh, should have an Auburn, mm -hmm. maybe a Duesenberg. Um, there's just so many muscle cars. Right. I mean, you, you know, I could go on and on for the muscle cars I would have on my wish list. I mean... I, I've always liked the Nova, um, the Chevelle. I think mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it's it's. Um, we just recently added a uh, Ford uh, seventy Ford Torino a GT with a four twenty nine. Nice. That's a nice car. <laughs> that, and we 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 took it off of the trailer when it was delivered from California, right. and we took it right to the mechanic so he could get that baby tuned yep. in and get it everything perfect. Um, so I haven't spent a lot of time in that car or with right. that car. So once we get it back and, and we, uh, you know, get some better weather, that's going to be a fun car. So mine would be a TV Batmobile. Yeah. Batmobile from the TV show, American yeah. Made, so it stays in the theme. Though. Right. That's, yeah. that's, so if you come across one of those, I'll come work on well, that. Well, and you sure. know, they're, they're kind of <laughs> common. You see a lot of, uh, lot of clones. At the, yeah. There was yeah. one at the Atlantic City auction that was for sale. Well, there's a guy in Atlanta that builds them, and you can... You can put your fifty thousand deposit down, right? And then two more payments of fifty grand, and it's all yours. Sure. So I keep his business. <laughs> I keep his business card in my pocket just in case. Right. How do you obtain these cars? How, where do you find these cars? A, a lot of them are auction cars. Um, uh, we we do a lot with uh, bring a trailer. I don't know if you're familiar with that online auction site. Um, we 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 have probably I would say eighteen of them have come from there. Mm -hmm. um, Various different auctions, uh, different magazines, yeah. um, people locally that hear about Vance's collection and are either downsizing or want to get rid of some of their cars or, um, you know, they're, they're, some people just, they, they don't want to do it anymore. They're right. too old and they, 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 they don't have it in them right. anymore. Um, and um, we've actually had people reach out to us because they want them to go into the museum right. because they know it'll be taken care of um, and, and they'll be preserved. And that's kind of the, the, the goal about the museum. It's not about, you know, just buying whatever cars you want because you can. It's about preserving the history of them. We want to keep the younger generations yep. interested in them. We don't want those old cars to fade away. Um, something we often talk about is some of those cars are 100, 120 years old. They all still work. Yeah. Another 100 years, if we take care of them, they're still going to work. Hmm. Some of the newer cars with all the technology, <laughs> probably not going to work in 100 years. Well, I appreciate uh, your insights. Thanks for sharing the stories and uh, look forward to hearing more about the uh, cars that you're going to add to it. Now. Sure. Thank you. Yep, we'd love to have you there. I'd love Come to go check there. It Trust out. me, I'm thinking it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. Yep. Today we're talking to a very, very special guest who makes the Garage Shop happen, the Garage Shop Insider happen. He's a big supporter of all this. We're talking to Vance Kirshner from Wilmington, Delaware, 
the man who created Labware. First of all, thanks for all your support of everything that goes on here. It's really, truly amazing how your involvement has taken the garage shop to another level. Well, I feel really good about that. I mean, it's very exciting to be involved with what's happening here at the garage shop. And, uh, and, it's, and it's, it's nice to not just be involved in a manner which says, oh, well, write Aaron a check for, <laughs> so go build me something right. and ship it to Wilmington when, you know, it's yeah. done, right. you know, but to actually be involved with these guys on a very detailed level and, mm -hmm. and they're just awesome people and craftsmen and just to, to, to live the development of these vehicles right. is a very special thing. So before we get to that, tell us what Labware is because that, that's your, your creation, something you invented. Yes. <clears throat> so uh, Labware is a software company mm -hmm. and what we do is we build enterprise software for managing laboratory operations. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means any, any sort of company mm -hmm. that's going to make something that needs to be tested. Mm -hmm. So that might be like things like pharmaceuticals. You, everybody realizes that you're going to have to test those things to make sure that they're okay to, right. to mm -hmm. uh, consume them. But it's many other things like food and beverage. All of that sort of stuff is you know, in the oil and gas mm -hmm. industry, you know, mining. So everything pretty much that involves some level of testing mm -hmm. and those samples go to a lab, and you need to be able to manage that whole process, and, and that's what we do. And so we're the we're the global leaders in what they call LIMS, Laboratory Information Management. System. And how long have you had this? I started, started about a little over thirty years ago. I okay. started the company. So Good. It's been a while. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Okay. So where did the car enthusiasm come from? Where did that start? Car enthusiasm started before Labware. <laughs> it started when I was a teenager. Right. You know, I, I always was uh, into uh, vehicles mm -hmm. and l liked uh, you know to work right. on them. And as a kid, street racing and you know and, and things yep. like that, and going to the to the drag strip and, and, and racing there and, and things like that. And, and then um, you know as I and, and that led me to go into mechanical engineering. My interest right. in, in how all these things worked you know right. really got me wanting to go mm -hmm. and study engineering. So uh, so I did, um, and I and combining the knowledge that you learn from going to engineering school, it really makes you be able to think mm -hmm. about what's going on in, in cars and, right. and racing mm -hmm. and things like that. And I found that just very, very interesting. So that, that's what led me to go down that road. Okay. First car you ever owned? First car that I ever owned was a 1963 Oldsmobile Jetfire, <laughs> which is a very rare car. I was going to say. It's, it's a, it's a uh, 215 cubic inch aluminum engine, okay. 215 horsepower. So it was it was extremely rare. Yeah. Um, but then after that, I bought a, the first new car that I bought was a, a 1973 Roadrunner. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice so, upgrade. Nice upgrade. <laughs> I still have that car. You do. I do. How many miles on it? Thirty-six thousand. That's it. Mm-hmm. Do you still drive it once in a while? Or? It sat for quite a long uh, time. Okay, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. So then I uh, I I haven't had it restored, right. and so yeah, mm -hmm. so it's back like it would have come from the uh, the factory. <laughs> it, it, it had some hard <laughs> miles in this. In I was going to say, if that was your first car, first new car. Yeah, I had a goal uh, every day with okay. it. Okay. I had to go 100 miles an hour and get, and get it in the air. You had to do what? Get it airborne. That was your goal every day. Yeah. 100 miles an hour. And airborne. Got it. Did it always? Land out, land out okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, Always, got, yep. got, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, when did you start the car collecting? We had Kenny, we talked to Kenny, and he's got, he said there's 40 cars on display, and there's 80 together, and the ones that aren't on display are hidden off in different places. Um, when did it start, like one turn into 10, 20, 30? Right, so to lead up to that, I would say that the, um, America went through some dark times mm -hmm. with respect to cars, yeah. and, you know, so, you know, when, once the, we got into the middle 70s and on mm -hmm. and, and, and all, my attention went to BMWs. So okay. I, I was a, you know, drove and had lots of BMWs over, over the time. Right. Um, and then, you know, as, as the, uh, we started to get American cars that were interesting again, <laughs> you know, then, then, I, then I came back to American cars. And that's okay. when I really started to, you know, really collect the older American cars. Okay. So um, that would have been probably eight years ago. Oh, really? Like okay, so it's fairly new. Fairly new, yeah. Okay, so the museum, when you started collecting, like, I got to do something with all these, or you just wanted to share them with other people, or is it something that you just, it, it, I don't know, like, you it, get to the point, like, what am I going to do with all these cars? Well, well yes, of course. Right. I mean, so it's, it, was, it just happened. It was okay. organic, you know. So it started out that, you know, <laughs> get a car and then get another car and then figure out where we're going to put the car. 
and then um, got the idea that I needed to have a garage. Okay, and so yeah. then we decided we would really, well, it can't just be a garage. It's be it got to be a car museum. <laughs> okay, got and it. And so then once we built the car museum, we thought, well, it would be really cool to build a diner, diner next to it. And right. so, you know, kind of that it just It's not up. just, a, it's a two-story diner. Right? A two-story diner. Nice. And it's got like the the aluminum and all it, It's all, sta all stainless steel. Perfect, yeah. And with, with red, white, and blue neon. Perfect. Yep. That's exactly what you need. Yep. Now, the museum, I'm up in Wilmington, Delaware. What's the name of it? It's Goober's Garage. Goober's Garage. And, and it's Goober's Diner. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the name come from? That came back from the days of the Andy Griffith Andy show. Griffith, that's what I thought. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, now, do you pay to go in? Is it something you would go into? Is it a museum for people just to check out? And... It's Goober's Garage. Okay. So you come up, come over and, okay. and, and, and see, see the cars and things like that. Right. It's not as set hours or anything okay. like that, but what we do with it is next to the diner. Whenever the diner is busy, and particularly right. on the weekends and things like right. that, we okay. open up and people Perfect. come over and you know look at the cars, hear the stories. It <laughs> kind of all ties into the theme. So I would go when I know you're going to be busy, so you'd open the garage. <laughs> well, we'll do it at every request <laughs> at any time. Yeah. And, and, and Kenny's the one who really manages yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, we talked with him. Um, very into cars and everything. So where does you guy, you met Aaron literally at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Correct. And you have driven there? I have not driven You're there. You're not driven there. I'm okay. going to. Okay. <laughs> You've but I, I, I was sponsored. Don't get airborne there, okay? <laughs> It'll be a little harder. Don't. If it's airborne, it won't be in a pretty way. It would be really land, pretty the horrendous. The landing's going to suck. I'm it's going to suck big time. Yes, absolutely. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I met Aaron there uh, mm -hmm. because I was sponsoring his cup car. Okay. And... Um, and so I was there to w watch him right. race at Bonneville. It's my first time I'd been to Bonneville. What did you think when you first got there? Well, for, it's otherworldly, first yes, of all. that's what I've heard. Yeah. Just it's just, it's just, And so we flew in and flew over the racetrack mm -hmm. and then, you know, landed. Um, and it was just amazing just to see it from the air and then on the ground and all. It's just, it's just like you're on another planet. Right. You know, it doesn't look like anything... <laughs> So, so you know, it was a different experience just because of that. But then it was a whole other experience to see all these other vehicles and the, that are that are not like any other type right. of racing vehicle at all. Everything's custom built to purpose, built for the salt flats, and to realize that you know a lot of people make this their life, you know, their life basically. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what they do. They've right. been the coming for twenty years, you know, thirty years. Yeah. You know, it's been multi generational. And, um, and 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 all the people were so nice that, that you know that wasn't like people that were hiding anything or trying to right. look at you as competitors. It's everybody not, was out there. Not and like it was a racetrack. Just a, all, it, it, yeah. Exactly. All right. So mm -hmm. it, it was it was a great experience overall, you know. And so, but anyway, I was there uh, with Aaron to support him, mm -hmm. and we were at the start line. And so we were waiting there, and I started to just ask him, well, you know, how did you get here? Right. Where, where, where did this come from? Right. Like, how? <laughs> And so he explained to me, you know, about the whole story with Bobby Isaac, mm -hmm. and that you know he um, he grew up with him, right. and that he was here to you know come back and, and get uh, records to, for the for cup cars. And so I thought that was a really interesting story. And we just started talking more and more about right. it, and and then it was the coming up on the 50th year uh, anniversary of of uh, you know Bobby Isaac mm -hmm. being at, uh, winning winning you right. know the the cup championship and then going to Bonneville and setting 28 land speed records. That's which amazing. Is, which is real. Not one, 28. 28. 28. 28. I think people forget about that. And it's like a small footnote on his historical career that I, don't, I think it should be talked about more because that's 28 individual speed records that you do by yourself. Correct. Yeah. And it's it, it was astounding, you know, yeah. really. And, and it was... It, and he would have been the only type of person that could do that because a lot of, in order, for these different events, some mm -hmm. of them, if you're a really good road racer, you know, or yeah. a drag racer, you might be good at it, but you're right. not going to be very good when the tail's out, and you're, right. you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know, going hundreds of miles, yep. you know, in the night. Right. So it really was an amazing feat. But the, um, but, but it was the story then I w was, you know, discussing with Aaron about, you know, the, the, the basic, with, it was a car, or the, you know, the, the, the Daytona mm -hmm. that he, he did this in. And so then it was just a few months later than that, you know, I, I saw Aaron at SEMA and we sat down and said, well, let's just build one, you know, these things. <laughs> let's just build one. Let's just do it. Let's go do it. You know? I'm going to build a diner. I'm going to build a car. <laughs> so, you know, I said, okay, well, All how right. much do you need? And I wrote him a check. <clears throat> right. So that's how it got started. <laughs> wow. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> so from there, the involvement became a little more and now you are involved with uh, you're, I heard there's a Roadrunner maybe being built here? There absolutely okay. is. Yeah. All yes, right. absolutely. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned to you, my first car was a 73 Roadrunner. Yes. So, you know, that had about 240 horsepower. So mm. we decided that we were going to build a 
Go ahead. Uh, one that's one that's a little bit more than that. <laughs> how, many, we're gonna, how many more ponies, man? <laughs> oh, it'll be somewhere between three and four thousand. Okay. okay. Yeah. Carbon gonna, fiber body. And you're gonna cut that loose at Bonneville. We're gonna cut it loose depending upon when it's ready. But okay. We'll, right. It'll certainly be on. on it, intention would be to right. take it there, but it'll go on right. something like C Cape Canaveral Spaceport. Okay. That's you good. Know, land speed racing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it'll be street legal. <laughs> Which scares me at a red light. <laughs> <laughs> what? It'll be like when you hit the gas, like a Transformer episode, and yeah. just blow everything out behind you. Uh, so when are you going to get? Is you gonna, are you the one that's going to get behind the wheel for yes. that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very good. So it'll, you know, we'll have the we have the old Roadrunner and we have the new version. Perfect. I think it's great that your involvement goes beyond just you know, like you said, write a check. But you show up, you're involved, you're here, um, you want to know what's going on, you stay in touch, uh, you have everybody involved here. And everybody that I think you know that the excitement here that these guys are going. I've worked with a bunch of these guys here, and I got to tell you, that's the happiest I've seen some of them in the 20 years I've known some of them. So what you're doing here is really making a difference. Well, thanks, and and I know that it is because right. they're I can tell that you know that they're right. really enjoying it and they work really hard and and it's mm -hmm. you know and, and they're all smiles right. and it's you know it's not work right you know it's not work it's not work when when, right. when you do something that you love you know it's <laughs> it's, it's it's so it's good it's nice yeah. to see that happen again and it was uh it's good to see aaron really you yeah. know energized about it too and if you can make tim clements happy he's, golf golf he's yeah he's, he's uh, very happy about various, it he yeah. considered it what he's doing art you, yeah. know, and, you know and that uh, it's a bonus that he's getting so went back to the old school where everything is made here by hand there's no buy a part, snap it on type thing. Everything they do is from metal right on up. Yeah, this is what's very different than if you just went to a speed shop, mm -hmm. you know, right. type of an operation where they're just going to order stuff out of a parts catalog, right. bolt it on, tune it up, and, you know, there you go. You know, th these cars are built from the ground up. And that, that appeals to me, too, yeah. because I can g think about it from an engineering point of view. Right. And so, uh, you know, I, and that actually helps them so sometimes, right. you know, that they're, they're looking at it from what they've done in the past building race cars. I'm looking at it from never having done that right. before, more from an engineering point right. of view. And so, some, you know, that leads us down some paths we might right. not other, otherwise have gone down, which I think are going to turn out to be really good. Well, I know you're hands on because I was here five minutes and I just, you know, I saw you, you had the tape measure out, you're looking, I was like, oh, this guy's really like involved, which I, is great because I think the more involved, the more ownership you take. Has Aaron come up with you an idea yet that made you go, no? Is there any, is there one that has been so out there because, what you guys have done so far and are doing is a little out there, but now I'm wondering if maybe there's one idea that Aaron ran by you that you kind of said, I don't know. When he was drinking? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You picked the story, okay? <laughs> yeah. No, to be to be honest, I think he's more of the one that's more grounding. Okay. Oh, okay. You're the one. <laughs> I'm usually the one. <laughs> Let's build a space shuttle. <laughs> the conversation starts with, I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> the, the worst, the, the worst, best things come after that. Yeah. Okay. What was your idea that he kind of grounded you on? Does well, all, all the time. Okay, we're, got we're, it. You know, we're right. trying to do, you know, cr things. I would say what, what Aaron is grounded on is, is that... Uh, it specifically with the streamliner project, mm -hmm. the idea there is that we want to apply technology yeah. and use technology to help do it a little bit different than has been done in the past because those cars really don't employ a yeah. lot of technology yeah. in them. And when I, when I say technology, I mean things like the, 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 the interaction with the engine controls and traction controls yeah. and all, you know, all of that, and engine yeah. management, you yeah. know, th stability control, right. whatever. Um, so that would be like electronic controls, but then also doing things, you know, that would otherwise, you know, make the car b behave differently. So he, he, I would say where he's been really grounding is he's, he's, he says, okay, chief, that's really cool, <laughs> but we have to build a car. And if we're going to do 20 new things, right. you know, th that's 20 one, new things that can go wrong, that. you know, yeah. and, and so we <clears throat> need to narrow that down and right. do this in phases, you know. So that's what we've done is, is we're, we're not, not doing it. We're going to start with, you know, mm -hmm. some basic things that are different and then right. we'll take it to the next level as after we so coming here like if someone's to drive down the street they have no idea what's going on behind these walls so the first time you came and i'll, I'll share my first impression your first impression when you came in and saw here and across the street all the cars and everything what was that to you what did that do you remember that yeah i do and okay. i was amazed because yeah. as you say it doesn't it's not right. like oh, there's it's this big fancy building with mm -hmm. all these big signs right. on it. Yeah. You know, like look how great this is. You know, <laughs> it, it's 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 not. It's low key. Right. You know, but the uh, but when you come in and you see it and you realize, well, I'm not just looking at stuff that that everybody else is doing. Right. This is special and yep. and you know the, the, you can see the craftsmanship instantly mm -hmm. and it's just um, you know that nobody's just doing this just to make a buck. It's because they love it and they right. want to be successful mm -hmm. and be competitive. And and, and, and you know you you pick it up right away. Right. 
And I had the same thing because I'd been talking. He goes, come up and check it out. I was like, all right. You know, you can see it on Facebook when you in the website, and it's like, okay, cool, land speed. And I've been following that, you know, sending him notes about that's cool. And he goes, come on up. So when I walked in, I'm like, wow, you guys are really and then involved in so much. And then, you know, I saw the frame of a, a Bonneville salt flat car hang, just hanging from the ceiling. I'm like, was that the one? He goes, yeah. I go, it's just hanging there now? He goes, yeah. And then you go across the street, all the modifieds and the history of the mm-hmm. cars, and it's just, it's phenomenal. So I, I think it's great that your involvement as a car enthusiast, um, if you could pass something on to a younger generation, what would what would be your reason to say to someone like we had a spot on twenty three years old, if someone who maybe wasn't into cars? What would be you something you would say to them like, hey, you really got to check this out because? Yeah, well, I think that it's a very important to, to suck the younger generation mm-hmm. into it. Right. And what is surprising to me is that there are a lot of people in the younger generation that really are into cars. Right. But their idea of all of the cars is that well they've got to look at this Lamborghini you know look look at this McLaren you know and and, and, and they and they yeah, yeah and they well they know their performance and right. their real performance cars and all that stuff but you know I'm not impressed if you take three million dollars and make something that goes fast that's just not right. okay great I, mean, I don't want to say anybody can do it right. but <laughs> it's not I'm not impressed by it okay you know uh-huh. and so what I what what I found though is when you take the the, the guys that are into cars and you show them a different world and you, you show them what were the old cars yep. like in the muscle car area you know out, out at the garage mm-hmm. and you know we fire them up and go for right. a spin yeah. you know and 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 then they they really start oh th- th- yeah. this is uh, they appreciate why there were you, you know uh-huh. their, their fathers or whatever were you know were, were into cars right. you know and then when you expose them to like some of the land speed racing events yeah. and stuff like that, they, they just get captivated by it. Very so, good. So, so I don't think we're introducing people into cars that don't have any background or interest in cars. It's more exposing the newer people that are into cars that, hey, it's not just the new stuff. It's not right. just the bling stuff. It, right. It's really the, what, you know, what, what the history was about and what we can do now. I was like when you got a, I got a 69 Corvette. And when I first had it, I remember I was checking it out and I was parked and I hit the gas and it went like this. Like it, it I went, oh, I'll take it. Because yeah. the car was like, like I'm ready to go. Right. I'm ready to go. And I'm like, yep, I'll take it. And that was, I, I think, and I drove it, of course, but I was like, I decided right then. But it's that, it's that roar and that's that of the engine and just feeling the horsepower in there. Not so much the performance, like you were talking about the other ones, but just that pure, raw horsepower of an older car. Absolutely. And, yeah. and the muscle car air was just incredible, yep. you know, the, what they were doing. Then, so, yeah. And I've got a number of those in the garage, so that attracts a lot of people. Of your collection, do you have, what are your two favorites? No, nope, don't have it. any favorites. <laughs> Is there a car out there that you would love to obtain you don't have yet? Of course. That's why I buy cars just about every day. <laughs> no. Which one's out there that you're... No, I, I, there's, I no, there's no one car. Right. I mean, if, if, if to answer your question... Right. If the right opportunity presented itself, and I, I, I would probably get it. I think a Ford GT would be a, a cool oh, okay. car. Okay, very. Know. Those are very cool. Yeah, but you know, I'm not in any hurry. Whatever. Okay. You know, it's just uh, there's 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 so many different cars out there that are right? so cool. All right, so we got the we got the Talladega, we got the um, Daytona's done. Talladega is getting worked on. Mm-hmm. Roadrunner's in the works. What's next? We haven't thought about anything okay. on it because right. we're going to focus on the land speed racing. Okay, so good. we have to. We're going to. The streamliner project is going to be a multi-year yep. project, that, good. and that'll be the main focus. Okay. You know? yeah. But, but I think the key point of what we're trying to achieve here, though, is to show people that right. hey, look, the, this, the, these three cars are very different cars, right? But they all were created out of this shop. It's approachable, you know, yeah. for people. So if you want, if your big thing was you had a Ford Mustang or you like, a, yeah. you know, it's. Ford Mustang is, is a really cool thing, a 60s or whatever yep. Ford Mustang or early 70s, and you want to have it be one of these cars that, that's safe and <laughs> goes really fast, and you know, but you can race it and right. all that. And yeah, you can build. They'll build it here. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> As I know. <laughs> well, I, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this insight and you being involved, uh, everyone appreciates it. And there's more exciting times and more episodes we're going to have. We're going to be talking to you, but I just uh, I, the enthusiasm you bring to this, I'm sure, spreads to this entire shop. Well, thanks. So appreciate and, it. Yeah, exactly. And and we're, although this is the main thread, of, mm-hmm. you know, we like to make little oh sure, set, you know, tangents, little tangents, and go over here and have fun with that, you know, things like that. That's like the little toy car over there. That'll <laughs> right. be a, that'll be a whole little thing all by itself. You know? I'm waiting for space flight to somehow get in here. Yeah, well, I, 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 I have a funny like talking to you now. I'm going somewhere. There's gonna be some rockets launched. I, yeah, <laughs> good chance. Hold on, folks. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thanks. Appreciate all it. All right, thank you. <laughs>